Hey everybody, this is my thoughts on the open beta for the PC version of Ghost Recon Wildlands new player versus player mode Ghost War. Now before I really get into the meat of this video, I do want to mention that I'm not going to be talking about anything regarding the actual base game here, which means I'm not really going to talk about presentation or anything like that. I'm only going to talk about the PvP mode. Because I believe the rest of that is better reserved for the actual main review that I will eventually be doing on Ghost Recon Wildlands whenever I do end up getting a copy of that. But anyway, to give you a bit of background here, Ghost Recon Wildlands actually released in March of this year. It was developed by Ubisoft Paris and published by Ubisoft, of course. And I played the closed beta of the base game and wasn't really very impressed with it. Now, when the game originally launched, it was single player and co-op only. They didn't have a player versus player mode in there at all, which is what this Ghost War mode is. So, what is the Ghost War mode? Well, it's a 4v4 deathmatch mode. And that's it. There's nothing else to it. At least as far as this beta is concerned, there is only one gameplay mode, and that is just a basic deathmatch mode, and there were only five maps to play on. As far as what you're actually able to play, there are seven of the game's classes available. One of them is the recruit class that everybody starts with, and then there's two for each category, which each category has four different classes you can choose from within it. Now, there are technically four categories, but one of them is occupied only by the recruit class, so there's not really much to talk about there. But the other ones are Assault, Marksman, and Support, which denotes their general role in the grand scheme of things. Now, I will be honest with you, I did not get a chance to play the Scout class. I did get a chance to play all of the other ones, but just not that one. So I do have a pretty good idea of how the whole thing works. And unfortunately, it's extremely bare bones. The classes are little more than simply loadouts. You select a class and it gives you different options for your primary weapon. You can select a perk, which gives you a static bonus. And then you have a basic ability that is available to that particular class. So to give you an idea, the scout has an enhanced drone that they can send up to scout things out. The artillery subclass has the ability to call in mortar strikes. And that's actually kind of it. The other subclasses really function as not much more than basic loadouts. You get different kinds of guns than you do with the recruit class, and that's really kind of it. The differences between some of these classes are so minimal, it ultimately just comes down to which weapons you prefer using as to which one's going to be more effective for you. That's why, for example, I found the sniper class to be the most effective in the entire game, because it gives you access to the MSR, which does enough damage to take down an enemy in a single shot. Now, of course, you do have to compensate for bullet drop, but that's really not much of a price to pay for something that will instantly drop just about any enemy in the game, unless you don't hit them in the head. If you don't hit them in the head, then it will just take you two shots instead. Now, before you mention that that encourages camping, which admittedly it does, they do have a marking mechanic where whenever you shoot an unsuppressed weapon, it will actually generate a sound marker in the general area of where you shot from, and then the enemy will be able to use that to determine your position. If you shoot too many times, then it will actually mark you specifically, and it will actually denote exactly where you are on their map, and it will show even who you are to them. Needless to say, even though the system does sort of encourage camping, you do have to be mindful of that marking mechanic, and you just need to break your position up every so often so you can get rid of that marker. Now, it is worth noting also that you can't just have an entire team of snipers. Instead, you can only have one person playing any given class at any given time on your team. The only exception to that rule is the recruit class because everyone has access to that, and that can actually be configured multiple ways. Now the way you actually unlock these classes is simply by leveling up. You're given an unlock token which allows you to unlock either a class or a perk if you've already unlocked a class that has multiple perks available. In my instance, I only used it to unlock the classes because honestly I didn't find the perks all that necessary. They have pretty negligible bonuses, so it's not really that big of a deal. But unlocking the classes was actually pretty easy because you just level up and all that takes is for you to just play the games normally. I was unlocking a new class at a rate of about one every two games, so at least as far as the level up grind, so to speak, goes, it really wasn't bad at all. But of course, that is during the open beta, and that is also keeping in mind that you could only get six classes. It may get a bit more grindy in the full release when you have to actually play for a longer period in order to unlock all of the classes and of course all of the perks. Now that said, as far as I can tell, there's no weapon unlocks or weapon attachment unlocks based on your levels, so don't worry about that. 
It's only for unlocking the classes themselves as well as the perks associated with them. And of course, when you unlock a class, you're given the opportunity to customize the character's appearance as well as the weapon appearance and everything of that nature, much like you are in the base game in the single player and co-op portions. So if you like that feature of the base game, you're going to like it in the PvP section as well. But the real concern here is in the actual core gameplay of the Ghost War mode, because it is very, very basic. It is quite literally just a 4v4 team deathmatch mode where the only objective is to eliminate the other team. The only things that really differentiate it from any other 4v4 deathmatch mode are the spotting mechanics where you have that whole being able to spot enemies with the drones or being able to mark them by actually hitting them with gunfire and things like that. And of course the associated recon tower which activates after a certain period of time in the match and then you can just go to that and activate it, although it does leave you wide open to being shot at because that instantly marks you on the map. But if you manage to activate the tower, then it does actually instantly mark all of the members of the enemy team that are still around. And the other thing that's a bit different from just about any other 4v4 team deathmatch mode out there is that you can revive your teammates, but that's pretty much it. And reviving your teammates is becoming more and more of a common mechanic, so that's really not something to say it's unique either. So ultimately what you end up with here is an extremely basic multiplayer mode that really does feel like it was just tacked on to say, hey, we've got a PvP mode now. Now, of course, the number of players that were messing around with the open beta are not necessarily indicative of the number of people who will actually be playing the full mode when it comes out, but I was seeing less than 100 players at all times, even during weekend prime times. And I would like to remind you that the Ghost War open beta was available to literally anyone who has a Uplay account, not simply people who own Wildlands. I don't own a copy of Wildlands yet, but I was able to play the Ghost War PvP beta, and even then, with that stipulation where everyone can get access to that beta, there was still barely anyone playing it. That really doesn't bode very well for the mode as a whole, and I really can't see it making a very big splash on the Ghost Recon Wildlands experience as a result. Maybe if they add some more meat to it later on and give you multiple game modes to work with, then it would actually become something interesting and worth playing, but at least from what I saw during the open beta, it's really not something that's worth your time, even if you are a fan of Ghost Recon Wildlands. I guess the ultimate summary of the Ghost War mode is simply, this far after release, and this is all we get? That's just pathetic. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in later videos.